controversy creates cash. A great man once said this. A man who's my favorite Raw GM of all time. Mike Adamley. You like that? While sports games in general stay out of any huge controversies in the gaming landscape, there are still some titles out there that cross that line. That line of unwanted headlines, edginess, and titties. If you want to see past that line, then join me for the next 12 and a half minutes. Punch Out, the classic game where you take a little no-name named Little Mac and dodge, punch, get your bike stolen, and eventually get a title fight with Mike Tyson. Don't worry, it's a clean fight. So you might be thinking, what's so controversial about Punch Out? What, did Mike Tyson do something to earn this game into the video? Well, no, not really. I mean, sure, he treated Evander Holyfield's ear like a mukbang video, but that's not really the issue. Mike Tyson would eventually be removed from re-releases because his contract with Nintendo would expire, and he would be replaced with Mr. Dream. No, not the meme face guy, this guy. That's interesting, but not really all that controversial. The controversy starts when looking into the opponents that Little Mac faces. Glass Joe, a cowardly Frenchman. Piston Honda, Japanese fighter who says random Japanese words that have no relation to one another. Also shares his name with a car. Soda Popinski, originally named Vodka Drunkinski. He's a Russian guy obsessed with vodka. So much so, he drinks during a fight. You fight these cultural stereotypes as a small white guy with seemingly no ties to any culture or stereotypes at all. Besides, I guess you can say small, scrappy white guy, which is often looked at as a positive. Yeah, this really doesn't sit well with people who are not a big fan of cultural stereotypes, thus contributing to the discussion and articles questioning whether or not this game is racist. Is it? I'll let you decide. Did these discussions change Nintendo's way of designing characters for Punch-Out though? Well, I'll say this. There would later be a character called Bear Hugger, a guy who's a Canadian lumberjack that eats bacon and chugs maple syrup. I think that says it all. Midway Games is no stranger to controversy. You have the Mortal Kombat series that literally helped create the ESRB due to violence. Midway would eventually take their violent ways to sports games. NFL Blitz, NHL Hits, MLB Slugfest, Red Card. All these games were arcade sports games and they're so violent you set the players on fire. Okay, you set them on fire in an NBA Jam kind of way. Not a punishment from stealing a piece of fruit in a third world country kind of way. But people did take issue with the violence. Blitz allowed you to continuously hit players after the play is over. Slugfest has these hard tags with the baseball, including my favorite type of tag to see in a baseball game, a knee to the nuts. Oh, what the fuck you need me in the nuts? Red card has drop kicks that'll make Maven proud, and NHL hits has you fight your opponent and punch them in the face. So I guess that's just hockey, huh? Now this isn't really all that big of a deal, right? The violence here is over the top and cartoony. But that didn't stop news reports. I specifically remember a report that was on the news. Maybe it was a local news outlet, I'm not sure. It was a report on Slugfest and how violent the game was with the hard tags. I can never find the news report on any of these games. So am I just making this up? Nope. A commenter posted on a video about ESPN Outside the Line covering it. So I scoured the internet. And when I say scoured, I mean use Google for about five minutes. And I couldn't find it. But I eventually did find another publication that had an article talking about the segment. So it did exist. I just can't find the original. Article goes over critics that existed during the time and questioning the violence in these games. Things would get even more controversial for Midway when they made Blitz the League. A game that has no affiliation with the NFL, so they can go balls to the wall with prostitutes, violence, and drug use, which includes magical steroids that heal broken bones. Seriously, you can snap your spine in half, take these steroids, and be back for the next play. Obviously, this generated a fair share of attention, but the thing that caught everyone's eye is the drug use. While everyone in the world was fine with Blitz the League, there was one place that still decided to ban it. Blitz the League was banned in Australia for drug use. Now that sounds crazy, and it is, but when you look a little deeper, you start to notice that Australia just bans anything. 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand, The Getaway, 
Come on, that's the game where you lean up against walls to magically heal bullet wounds. Why on earth is that getting banned? The sequel, Blitz the League 2, looks like it avoided being banned despite being the same or arguably even worse in some areas. Maybe Australia has lightened up a bit, or maybe, just maybe, they realize it's just a fucking football video game where you can rip someone's testicles in half. It's not really all that serious. Dead or Alive is a classic fighting game. That's it. The game is just known for its fighting. Nope, nothing else. Can't think of a single thing. Boy, do I love these uh, fighting mechanics. Yeah, that's it. So eventually everyone that loved certain things about Dead or Alive got it with Dead or Alive Extreme. Hey, it's got beach volleyball in the title, so you know it's a sport. So this game focuses on picking one of many ladies. This girl's age is not available, which leads me to believe that she's a minor league baseball player. Minus the words league baseball player. That's fucking illegal. They're also from different nationalities. An American girl. See, I can definitely play this game with one hand. The other hand will be too busy saluting the American flag. The whole game is doing these little mini games and once in a while playing volleyball with the most insane tit physics I've ever seen in a game. Like these things are so large it looks like the silver ball things from The Incredibles. I even feel like I need to take a shower just making this video. Like I need to throw a blanket over myself and my monitor so no one sees what I'm editing right now. But hey, it has Dennis Rodman in it so you know it's a sports game. Obviously people had issues with this game. Not everyone thinks like Games Radar who set a scene from this game as the 72nd best moment in gaming history. GameSpot said it sent the gaming industry back five years, along with other publications not liking the game's titillating features. Tecmo sued a modding website because they made nude mods for the game because what did you expect? With all of this controversy, you'd expect this to be only one game, but they made four of them. Even one on the PlayStation Portable. Who the hell is gonna play this game on a goddamn bus? For Dead or Alive Extreme 3, they implemented VR support where you can get as close as you want to the girl and touch her while she pretty clearly denies your advances. Safe to say there was no outrage about that at all. And that's the Dead or Alive Extreme series. There have been other games of similar nature, like Rumble Roses, which is a wrestling game where women dress in scantily clad clothing and do things like have mud matches, but that's nothing compared to this. To top it off, Team Ninja would give the greatest headline any article could ever have. If fans masturbate to Dead or Alive, it's a success. Hopefully this quote makes the Video Game Hall of Fame one day, because it really does deserve a pedestal. To look at something a little bit more mainstream, the NBA 2K series is probably one of the more well-known sports games out there. It got its start with humble beginnings on a Sega Dreamcast. Many editions of the game would release over the years, but somewhere in the early 2010s the gaming landscape changed forever. Monetization happened, specifically with these card collecting modes that EA started with Ultimate Team. You could spend real money to buy packs for a random chance to get a good card. You can grind to get these things rather than paying money, but but normally it would take so long to do so, people just buy packs. You can even see completely stacked teams online on release day, and there's no other way to do this unless real world money was spent. 2K Basketball would eventually follow this practice. Discussions would start whether or not these modes are gambling and whether they should be illegal or not. 2K would deny this and eventually release the game that contained this. <laughs> Well, I for one am glad they have a little basketball minigame in their casino simulator. But this is completely gambling. People questioned video game rating systems for keeping this game E for everyone, despite the fact that it has simulated gambling, which is often met with an older rating, even going as far as adult only. The ESRB keeps this game rated E for everyone despite this. But hey, at least they cracked down on the game using words like damn and hell. While the NBA 2K series would continue with the microtransaction card game stuff, the casino minigames would eventually be dropped after 2K20. 
There's a long, long line of Tony Hawk ripoffs. There's so many, you can probably make a video on it. One of the better ones though, was the Dave Mira BMX series. Out of all the Tony Hawk clones, this one actually had some success. There were two Dave Mira BMX games before things got a little deflated. The publisher of these games was a whack-ass acclaimed sports, which I've covered in the past. They've made bad games and were put into a hole financially, so they insisted on doing these weird promotional tactics like paying for speeding tickets, using homing pigeons for advertisement, and buying your loved one's tombstone to advertise a game. If my legacy after death is being an advertisement for Shadow Man 2, and I think I'd rather go to hell instead. So yeah, these guys were desperate for publicity and they would eventually get it. Acclaim would make a third game in the Dave Mira BMX series, but this one was a bit different. BMX Triple X is a game that tries to be overly crude with things like nudity, both virtual and actual real life stripper titties, prostitutes, crude humor, and dogs humping. Sure enough, I can't show you any of this. Adding all this stuff into the game doomed it. Reviewers bashed it heavily, calling into question the juvenile humor and sexual content. As far as sales, the game would sell terribly. Retailers like Walmart and Toys R Us refused to carry the game due to the nature of the game. Dave Mira himself would eventually sue a claim because both parties agreed to part ways once Dave Mira found out that the game was being turned into a 14 year old's wet dream. But a claim still used them in advertisements. Even the game's legacy is tarnished. No one really looks back fondly on this game, and you can't even stream it on Twitch, making it one of the few non-adult only games on the platform to be banned, along with the likes of genital jousting. I know that's a game I want to be associated with. BMX Triple X would be the final nail in Acclaim's coffin. And isn't it fitting? A game where they spent millions of dollars in advertisement and tried their absolute hardest to drum up any attention ended up killing them. Oh well, at least the ever reliable Australia banned this game. But then they unbanned it? Come on Australia, this is the one time I was counting on you. Now there have been other crude sports games like this, like Outlaw Sports and that one Aqua Teen Hunger Force golf game that was made for some reason. But BMX Triple X wins the title for being the most infamous. A claim adding edginess in an attempt to get sales is the equivalent of chopping off your own head to stop a headache. 